Welcome to the very first edition of this video series. What I want to do with this is I want to introduce some of the UAS news that happen every week and on Fridays basically create a video and tell you guys about everything that's new in the drone industry. And what you just looked at was episode number one. And today, guess what? It's episode 100. And I tell you, for episode 100, we have a lot of things to talk about because we have been really busy this week. Not just us, the industry in general has been very, very busy. Uh, we've come a long ways from episode one. You can see the different background. You can see uh, my good old shirt that I use for pretty much every single courses that I taught back then. Uh, this was actually pre-Pilot Institute or right as we started Pilot Institute. So um, I'm, I'm really excited. This, this, is, this number 100 is because of you guys. So uh, thank you for watching. I wanted to say this before we get started with the news uh it, it's been it's been so amazing being able to talk with you every week answer your comments have actually adult conversations on youtube about uh, professional topics and and uh and i can't thank you enough so here's to another 100 or another thousand uh, wherever this takes us but this week we get four topics that i want to talk about the first one is the new FAA regulation is finally here. And uh, as you're watching this on Friday, it's been two days now that we've had the new regulation. Uh, we'll talk about what that means and then uh, give you some pointers on making sure that you do this the right way. We have a really large aircraft, the Scorpio, Scorpion XL. We'll, uh, I'll show you some pictures and tell you more about this drone. Uh, we have a, more, a drone flying on Mars, finally. This was really exciting. I know a lot of you have shared this information, so we'll dig in a little bit. And then lastly, I want to talk about a new report from the FAA. Uh, it's called a NASA report. And if you're a manned aircraft pilot, you know what I'm talking about. They're bringing the NASA report to uh, UAS. So we'll talk about how you use it and then what it means for you. It's actually a really good thing. So let's get to it. <music> The first thing this week is the new FAA regulation. It's finally here. We've been talking about this for a long time. It's been delayed and it's finally April 21st or past April 21st now. And we have the new FAA regulation out there. Uh, it's for operations over people, operations over moving vehicle, uh, renewing your certificate and also, or, or getting current with your certificate, I need to say. And the last one is operating at night. So uh, let's start with night because this is kind of the easiest one starting April 21st, you can now fly at night without a waiver as long as, as long as you do one of two things. As long as you pass the initial exam after April 6, on or after April 6 of 2021, if you did the initial exam, the UAG, then you're covered, you can fly at night as long as you have a, a light on top of your drone that's visible from three statute miles. If you took the exam before that, you're part 107 pilot, you've been doing this for a while, uh, then you need to make sure you go on fasafety.gov and you take the exam or the, the, the training, I need to say the training, uh, called ALC 677. And uh, ALC 677 will make you current for another two years and it will give you all the knowledge that you need to fly at night without a waiver. So uh, something happened right before we were about to record this video. Uh, the FAA posted information about how to fly at night in a lens approved area. And this is something that you couldn't do. This is something that we were somewhat worried about. And the FAA delivered on the day of the new regulation. So listen, this is pretty simple, but the way that it's explained on the FAA website is difficult. So I'm going to do my best. Uh, the, the concept is very simple uh, by default. What you need to do first, and you need to download this document uh, from the FAA website. It's a PDF. It's a blanket certificate of, uh, of approval. It's a, it's a waiver to fly at night, essentially, in Lance, as long as you do something else. But you need to have that document first, print it, put it in your flight bag, have it available as a PDF so that if the FAA asks you, you can say, yep, I have a copy of it right here. So it's 7711-1. Uh, um, I know that's just the number on the PDF. Download that document, keep it. It's a one-time thing. Then you don't really have to worry about it. The other thing that you need to do, let's say that I wanted to fly on April 25th, okay? I want to do a night flight on April 25th at 10 p.m. What you need to do is you need to submit a lance request during the daytime, anytime during the daytime on April 25th for the area where you want to fly at night. I want to fly here in Prescott at Watson Lake and I want to fly at 200 feet. That's the maximum I'm going to be allowed to fly in that area. So I submit a lance request for April 25th at, uh, at uh, 1 p.m. during the day. 
And then that request, that lens request, because I have that 7711-1 uh, document, that certificate of waiver of approval, that means that I can fly at night on that specific day on April 25, uh, anytime at night until midnight, basically until 11.59 p.m. Now, if my approval, if my flight went past 11.59 and when it went into uh, April 26, then I would need to submit also a request for Lance to fly during the day. I know it's kind of a weird thing, but you need to submit a, a daylight uh, request in Lance for April 26, and then you would be able to fly past midnight. So just remember, whatever the day is, whatever that date that you want to fly at night, just submit a Lance request for that specific area uh, for any time during the day. And then because of you have that PDF with you, then you can use that, that Lance request that you did, you can use it to fly at night on that same day. It really is that simple. So uh, I hope if you have questions, leave them in here. I've been already asking quite a few questions uh, today. And, uh, and if it's not clear, but that's really the bottom line. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next thing. Obviously the, the last part of the regulation is you can now fly over people and, and everybody's getting really excited about this, except, Except, well, it's not that easy. You need to meet the requirements. It's just not a free for all. And, uh, and I'm not gonna go over all the regulation because we just posted a, a almost 40 minute video on just that. So I recommend, I'm gonna put the link up here. I recommend that you go and take a look at that video. We did some testing. Actually, we crashed drones into uh, human-like skin because we did some, uh, some testing to see if the blades would actually create a laceration. So uh, there's more to it than just the regulation. And uh, I think the video is, is actually pretty cool. We spent a lot of time doing that. Uh, so head over there. Make sure you're familiar with the regulation to fly over people. Don't just go and take your drone and go fly over people. That is, I can guarantee you, 100% illegal, even with this new regulation in place. So educate yourself, don't get in trouble, and, um, and, and fly safe. You know, that's, that's what we do here, help you fly safe. All right, done with the FA. Let's move on to the next uh, thing, which is a, a large drone. And when I say large drone, this is a 439 pound drone. So this is not a Part 107 drone. Uh, this is the Scorpio XL, and this is a, a drone that's made in the US. It's a heavy lift, or it's actually a super heavy lift. Uh, it's 18 feet in diameter, okay? An 18 foot diameter drone. Uh, it's got a lot of propellers, it's got a lot of motors, and uh, this thing has a payload of a thousand pounds. So lots of applications actually for this kind of drones, you know, if, uh, whether it is for search and rescue to actually carry people and bring them back to safety uh, for agricultural purposes. There's a lot of things that you can do with this drone. The price in itself for the drone, 1.7 million. If you think about it, it's actually, um, if you're gonna be using it for commercial purposes, it may actually not be all that much. Still a pretty heavy price tag, but uh, the, the, the company, again, you can see pictures here. I'm gonna put a link down here if you wanna find more information, but uh, pretty exciting to see an American company doing this. There's a drone on Mars. If you haven't heard, we've been reporting on this a couple times. Last week, we said that they had a little delay. They needed to uh, talk to DJI to get approval. Uh, no, just kidding. Uh, they just needed to uh, get a software update pushed out. But uh, it was a success. They finally flew. They flew for 39 seconds, 39.1 seconds. Uh, the first test was just a hover test to make sure everything was good. Uh, I saw people saying, well, why did it just hover? Well, this is, this is, I mean, this is amazing. If you think about what they did, they flew a UAS on a planet, another planet than Earth, which is the first time that this happened, a first powered flight on another planet. And uh, they flew at 10 meters AGL, so 33 feet, uh, no lens requests required. Uh, they didn't flew at night, so that was, that was fine, no waiver required either. Uh, the, the cool thing about this is, I mentioned this before, the UAS actually carries a little piece of the fabric that was on the Wright Brothers aircraft. So a little legacy right here uh, for the first flight in the, U, uh, in the world uh, with the Wright Brothers. So that was kind of interesting. Uh, there's gonna be more of these flights. We don't really know yet the, the schedule, but it looks like they're gonna be flying more. Uh, that was the plan all along. They have uh, larger missions now that the hover was successful. Uh, they're gonna try to fly a little further away, uh, possibly take some images. I think uh, I had read on the, on the NASA website they wanted to take some images as well, but the, the main goal is to study the uh, aerodynamics of flying this aircraft. I think the equivalent atmosphere, I think I read, was uh, flying at, at 30,000 feet elevation. So that's, uh, that's a huge number, and uh, obviously they were able to do it, so that's cool. Okay, last piece this week is the ASRS NASA report. 
Um, as a manned aircraft pilot, if uh, any of you that watch our manned aircraft pilots, you're familiar with the NASA report because it's been around for a long time. Um, the, the NASA report, it is ran by NASA, and I'll explain why in a second, but it's, uh, it's a report that allows pilots, air traffic controllers, mechanics to self-report when they broke the FARs by accident. So I'll give you an example. You're flying around. Uh, you're in an area where you're proved to fly up to 100 feet AGL, and then a, a, a bird comes to attack your drone, and you decide to climb up. You were right at 100 feet AGL, and because of that, you climbed and you went 150 feet AGL. So you busted the airspace, and, uh, and you did something technically illegal. Um, this report right here allows you to self-report that accident without any repercussions. The great thing about it is it allows NASA, and NASA is a third party in this because they're not the FAA, so they're collecting the, the data, not on behalf of the FAA, but they're collecting the data so they can do the analysis for uh, the FAA, but without the repercussion. So you feel you should feel secure sending that information to NASA. And, um, and they're, they're collecting data on safety, which is good because it helps with a lot of different things. And uh, this has been going on, like I said, for a long time with the manned aircraft world. Uh, a great report. I've never had to file a NASA report. I'm, I'm happy about that, but I definitely would file one if something happened. So uh, obviously this is not a, a, a get, a, get out of jail free card, right? This is something where uh, it's only if it's accidental, if it's inadvertent. Uh, if you're going in there and you're busting regulation on purpose, uh, flying over people when you're not supposed to, whatever it is, or busting into an airspace, this is not going to cover you. This is only if you did it by accident. So uh, if you self-report, the FAA is basically looking at it as, uh, okay, you, 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 made, you, you made an error and, and now here's the information. So um, I recommend that you take a look at it. I'm going to put a link down here. Uh, you have 10 days to report that information to NASA when it happens. And, uh, and I'm glad that this is coming to the UAS world. Um, I was in an FAA meeting not too long ago and we were actually talking about this. So I'm glad the FAA came out and, uh, and did this. And this is all I have for this week. Uh, we have the Pixel Drone Show. We did uh, interview uh, Loretta Alkali, and she's a former FAA attorney, and she's also an adjunct professor for Vaughan uh, College of Aeronautics. And we had a really good discussion on remote ID and, and the legality of remote ID. And this is probably not the conversation you would expect from uh, somebody who's worked with the FAA for, I think, 30 years. She was with them for a long, long time. And uh, she was actually fairly critical about remote ID. So I, I recommend that you go and listen to the conversation. Uh, lots of really good questions and good topics. Uh, this is on our Pixel Drone Show uh, channel, and you can find more information down in that section in the, in the comments. And uh, we have the airplane news update also on our airplane channel. This week I'm talking about a, an autonomous airplane, actually large a Cessna Caravan aircraft that uh, did a successful flight from point A to point B without a pilot. Uh, I don't know if it's cool, if it's scary, or, or both maybe. Uh, we talk about Delta posting a pretty big financial loss, which is expected. And then we'll talk about a new Bonanza aircraft. So if you're into aircraft or you're just interested in this, head over there and we'll give you all that information. But in the meantime, again, thank you for 100 episodes. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited about this. I look forward to another 100 and uh, looking forward to the comments in the section, in the comment section. And uh, that's it, really. Fly safe. See you next week. Don't be a UAS hall. And, uh, and that's it.